we are back. What up? Funny but foul coming to you. Hopefully on a Monday, hopefully on a Thursday. We don't even know at this point. We don't. We don't. Well, you we hope good. that you can start your mornings listening to this shit because it's, it's going to be a fucking good one. It's a good one, man. It's going to be a really good one. We've been looking forward to this one for a long time. Yep. Yep. These are the ones, you know. These are why we uh, we suffer things to tell you about the consequences. Yeah. Yep. So we're getting into it right now. Yes. Welcome back, everyone. Got yep. our boy, my man, Agbashlu. Coming to you uh, on the A7C, you know, extra crispy. Oh, the, the, dude, but you got the nice angle. You yeah, got the nice I got the, I got the crispy angle. Got the I, I don't like this fucking arm, though, man. His arm sucks dick. Hey, it's, it's, you'll, you'll figure it out. I mean, you'll, you'll, yeah. you'll like it. But I uh, just want to take a quick moment while my boy here fixes his shit. Uh, remind you guys to subscribe, share with all your friends. If you guys like what the fuck you're listening to, share with your friends. Share, man. Make sure to follow us on other platforms if you're not. So if you listen to us on Spotify, follow us on YouTube as well. We're at Funny But Foul. We have an Instagram as well, Funny But Foul Podcast. Yes. Check us out. Um, like the like the posts, like the videos. They help us out with the help algorithm. Help the algorithm, man. It, does, it all it helps does. the algorithm. And, um, and yeah, if, any, any other things that you want to, us to talk about, look. Help us it. help you, man. Let us know. But help us help you. With that, I want to say that we're going to do a quick intro. We are going to start. Finally. 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 That's right. Part one. Part, Part one. one. I've been looking forward to this in a long time. Part one of the prison series. Yes. We have been dropping hints about this for a very long time throughout all the different episodes. But this is it. We're getting this started. This is it. My man Artmon is finally letting me take the reins here for this one. This is like an audition of sorts for me. But uh, I'm looking forward to this. So I guess without uh, without more said, we'll get into this. So my man. Yes. Take us back to the beginning. The very beginning. Like, I guess, how before you got into prison, because we, we mentioned already before how you yeah. were there, but where were you in life before you got in? Like, what were you doing? Where were you? I was, I was in this pilot program in San Diego and... Uh, I was doing really well. Like planes, helicopters, or what? Yeah. Like what? Like I was just trying to get my commercial. Shit, really? Yeah. And uh, I was in. I was in basically. There was like a six-week period where you study. Yeah. So you, you study like the schematics of a, uh, of of like the cockpit and, yeah, and yeah, whatever. Yeah. And then within that six-week period, this happened. But right after that six-week period. I, I actually decided against it and I and I went through a different route which right, didn't right. pan out either but yeah, yeah, yeah. it's all about you know trial and error and all that um, but generally in my life yeah. at that age you know 21 20 I was in a really good place in my life okay I was really enjoying it okay. I was living by the beach oh yeah because you were where, where, uh, where, where were you? San Diego, San Diego man yeah. oh, San Diego man. I was in Pacific Beach California baby yeah so if you can just imagine man I was literally I would open up my back patio door and it was the beach 10 yeah, feet yeah, away. Yeah. Uh, 10 feet. I had to run 10 feet That's and it was the beach. That's fucking crazy, man. That's and like was, uh, these guys that live in, uh, in fucking Crescent Beach. Yep. Like every time I go with my parents and it's yep. like, you literally, like, they are on the beach. They're right there. And it's just, uh, the only difference is, like, they get to their fence and then you're, you're right you there. You see it right crazy. there. It's the rear end, baby. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I was surfing every day. You know, it was fun, man. It was lots you're of living fun. living that Cali life. I was living that Cali uh, life, man. Okay, I was, okay. dude. I, th- I think I had a, a, a little longboard too. Really? Yeah, because I think I found a longboard and I, I just, I would never pay for a longboard. Okay? Let's yeah, get that I straight. Yeah, I mean, who's going to f- fuck that? Yeah, but no, uh, no way, no I way. think I found one. I think it was some homeless guys and I I just picked it up sure. and, I, and I eventually got, got on it and it was lots of fun. But uh, to the darker days of Cali, the darker days, the first thing I remember, man, when it was uh, when I realized that. We're in pre-trial, and I was looking at what the council wanted or the crown wanted. Yeah. And they were they were they were looking at something like four to six. Four to six years. Four to six years. Jesus. Right. So. Because in the th- end, how long did you stay in for? Uh, close to. Give or take, like five six months. Okay. Okay. Five six months. Um, but it was four to six is what they're looking at at the beginning. Four, four to six, but I, I gave up on my case. That's why I got out, right? People that actually 
did went through their case, yeah. some of them are still in there from fucking then. So I got out in 2016. Some of those guys are still in there since fucking 2010. Yeah. And they're still fighting the same case. Yeah, yeah. Similar to mine. Okay. So that's why I kind of gave up. The option what were either fight your case and stay in prison uh-huh. or go back, get your shit expunged, come back for the next like five years or something on pardons. Yeah. And then eventually they'll slip off the pardons and you get your green card again and sure, blah, blah, sure. blah. And so on so and so what, forth. What, what, what did you do? I decided not to do it because I came back voluntary departure. I decided not to fight my case. When you say came back, when you came back to Canada. Came back to Canada. Oh, I see. Came back to so Canada. You basically said, I'm okay with whatever sentencing you guys gave up. I'll, I'll just fucking, I'll just go back to my country. <clears throat> yeah, because because initially, when they t- tell you in pretrial, like, okay, Crown wants so and so, they want four yeah. to six. Yeah, yeah. It's not necessarily that that's gonna happen that you fight it right right so what i showed to them was like i was in some anger management program and blah 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 and uh they basically wanted like a month in county okay and then and so what i what here's the other yeah. thing maybe explain for our viewers real quick because i guess now that we're talking about the american jail right. system explain those the difference between like county jail and the other kinds of jails you might you might get into small time crimes theft petty, robbery petty, petty, petty shit okay, okay. petty petty stuff or it's your first time. I see. Okay. So in the States, in the state of California, battery with serious injury is the worst, pretty much one of the worst things under like rape and fucking, you know, uh, killing, homicides. Okay. So it's basically like it's manslaughter and then it's fucking violent crime right after that. Right. To a certain degree in certain states, they actually treat violent crimes worse than like drugs and stuff. Right. Because just because you deal drugs and traffic doesn't necessarily mean that you're like a danger to the people who are Fair you know yeah, yeah. carrying you so here and there like, if you're like a violent offender that's yeah considered more dangerous way than worse yeah, yeah okay worse right so generally they gave me we're talking we're like 30 40 g's deep in lawyer fees okay right i was coming back i was on bail i was coming back vancouver to there vancouver to there for yeah, all, yeah, every court yeah. case and then this was in like 2014 15 and then uh, eventually they told me the verdict and, and you know, this is after months and months. Yeah. And they told me that, you know, you got to go in for at least a month plus do, you know, a thousand hours of fucking ang- uh, anger management. For and the reason that I lived in Canada, I just faked that anger management shit. Sure. I just got it written up. And so when they told you a month plus all the other things that they wanted to see, what was at the time when you were told all that? What was the outlook going to be for when you actually finished all that? Like, were you just good? No. So basically I was there on a, on a, on a, like a, basically a grant. And okay. what I mean is like, I, I was granted to be there. Right. Right. For school, for work, whatever. Yeah, yeah. So, um, that went against that grant. Of course. So I could never be there after that. Yeah. I would still have to beat my immigration case. So once you have a crime, you got to deal with the crime sentence. Cause you're not even a, a PR. Yeah. You're literally, so yeah, okay. exactly. So that being said, you, then you got to deal with the fucking immigration mm-hmm. and the immigration is the one that takes like 10 years, five years, three years. Yeah, no. Yeah. That's I crazy. got buddies that still yeah. call me on collect from there. That's crazy. And they're still there. That's Same crazy. dudes. How often do you talk with guys from prison? Like remember, remember a while back I was like, man, there's like 30 dudes I talked to. Yeah, yeah, those are all... Ten, ten of them are, are still <laughs> in there. <laughs> ten of them are still in there. Fair, fair. Uh, savages. But basically, man, I didn't see a hope. I didn't yep. see a hope. It's dark because you do the same thing every day. Yeah. Right? And there's only so many things you can do. And you just hear about people. Right? And there's lots of people that you don't hear about because you can only tell so many people while you're in there. That's true. But like... Who are you going to call? I guess... Oh, so you were told this from the judge that they're like, okay, now we're... You, what they just sentenced you to a month in jail? Is that, yeah. Is that what they said? Yeah. Basically? Yeah. So and because because I was so like uh, adamant about my responsibilities, yeah, they allowed me to be on bail and decide when I'm gonna turn myself in. Okay. So, so I basically turned myself in for the good of future endeavors sure, in the United sure. States. 
were you given like a time limit as to when you could show up? Yeah. To turn yourself in? Yeah. Or how long it were you given? It was 90 days. 90 days. 90 days to show up. So within that 90 days, just show up and like start. You better show room. up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's go into it though. Let's go into yeah, it so in let's, the so, 90 so, so, days. Okay. So, yeah. so, so take us through you deciding like, okay, I'm going to fucking now actually show up and, and start serving my time. What does that look like? You just drive to prison. You're like, no. yo, my name's Carl. Like, what's <laughs> no, the deal? No, no, yeah, no, no. So, so, how does so you work? come back here. You talk to your boys. You're, yeah. you're still partially dealing drugs. You talk to people, you know, sure. smart people, dumb people. Yeah. And not a single soul was like, hey, you should turn yourself in. Everybody's like, yo, man, fuck the States. Fuck that. Just stay fuck here. Stay States. in Canada. Stay in yeah, Canada. yeah, because why, why not? Yeah. Right? yeah. But from that age, I knew that I wanted to do some type of entertainment, some type of podcasting, some type of comedian. Sure, sure. And I don't want to close that door on myself. And you wanted to do it, in the, I guess, in the States, which is why you decided to. Yeah. I, I, you know, I never saw myself living in Canada long term as far as. I could see myself laterally living in Canada, yeah. like have a place here, come back and forth. Yeah, yeah. But long distance, long term, long, yeah. not really, okay. not really. So okay. I saw the opportunity there because just from the money that you make and the cost, you're like, man, it's way cheaper to live out here. Yeah, so nice. And it's nicer, right. man. It's nicer. Cali is fucking nice. Cali is nice. Cali not is like Miami, nice. but it's, <laughs> it's, it's true, still true. nice. It's yeah, low class yeah. Miami. Um, and then you basically pick a date. You get on uh, YVR, uh, you get picked up by the bondsman okay. over there. They pick you up and like, they pick me up in like a fucking, um, one of those Lincoln fucking oh, company like, like cars. The, like the sh- oh, like, not, not like the sheriff's fucking vehicle, whatever. Basically, it was like a guy that was driving yeah, yeah, yeah. and he was like, oh, we're taking to the bonds guy. We went to the bonds oh, guy. Okay, okay. Yeah. yeah, went to the bonds guy. He's like, okay, here's your hotel key. Here's your this. Yeah. Three days from now, you got to turn yourself in here. Yeah. You need this paperwork. You need this. Was um, I'm guessing all this was arranged through your lawyer, right? Because yeah. how else would you like yeah. tell people, like, yo, I'm gonna start doing this? Yeah. Tell your lawyer, and he just figures it out from there, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. Um, so I I went in with two two felonies. One was um, battery. Yeah. And was serious injury, and one was uh, it was like assault. Okay. Okay. And it was it was like it was I think it was second degree or first degree assault, which means like most violent. Yeah, yeah, sure. Assault, right? There's degrees of assault. So I went in just with that, right? So at this point, I'm I'm in court. I'm walking in court. I'm basically with my backpack, with my shit, and I, I give my backpack to the sheriff. They, they sentenced me right there, fucking basically yeah. like knight me into the fucking prison. Yeah. <laughs> Here, you're knighted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then uh, and then you're you're in there. You're in kind of a portion of a jail so you're in the courtroom it's a basically holding facility within holding the facility. courthouse okay, okay exactly and what happens at this point is they start dissecting you they start dissecting what you what the fuck do you mean okay so you go through a progressive they tell you it's only 12 hours till you get to to, to jail yeah. or prison yeah i spent seven days there in this holding facility? In a holding facility. What the fuck? And I'll tell you how yeah, it goes. Yeah, and cool. this will bring us to the end of part one. Yeah. So this this holding facility is, is, is interesting because the only food that they give you is peanut butter spliced into like little diamonds diagonally. Sure. And a piece of carrots or a piece of biscuits three times a day. Okay. I got there at one. Breakfast ain't until eight. Okay. So you're there for six hours. Just delusional with all the stress. To, like, clean you up or something? Like, what's the deal with this? It's basically you're there with anybody and everybody, misdemeanor-wise, okay. yeah. smaller felony-wise, first-timers. You'll have anybody from dudes that are just nodding off to dudes that just got beat up to a dude that got stabbed to a fucking couple guys that are like suspects for some fucking homicide. Yeah. But they they don't have proof on them yet, so they're they're there as like small-time dudes. Okay. Drug dealers, shit like that. So you're there and you walk around the room and you look around the room and you, you look at yourself and you, you realize that you are Fuck. the most normal person here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Everybody else here is Truly like fucked. fucking no hope. No yeah, hope. Yeah, Everybody's yeah. gone. Everybody's gone. And um, that's when you realize like this isn't going to be fun. This yeah. is going to be so it, it kicked a jungle. You, it kicked into you there. Yeah, not, it, not, not it, at YVR taking the flight no. over. Not when the bonds picked you up. Not when the fucking sheriff it was there in that fucking room. Yep. Uh, you don't know what things cost till you're doing it. This is what I'm trying to tell you. Yeah. The 
there's certain aspects that you don't realize you don't you don't put in perspective even though they're the most common sense things that you could realize sure. yeah. when you're in it you realize how common sense they are but they're not so anyway so you, seven days are up no 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 let me go through this oh, so they take you they don't let you stay in the same cell more than six hours okay. so you're getting no sleep and these guys have 12 hour shifts and they switch every six hours right so you have fresh dudes they got tons of energy yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, these guys are, you know, nocturnal. Some of these guys work at night for the last 10 years. So their yeah. energy levels compared to yours, <laughs> fucking ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they call you and shit and you got to go. So you first go and they, you start telling them, they start fingerprinting you. Okay. Taking your height, your weight, butt naked, all that. Okay. So that's the first part. Then they take you back to the cell. They give you a little biscuit and fucking dirty ass fucking shit peanut butter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then another six hours goes by. Six hours goes by. You go get you get blood work. Mm-hmm. Get blood work. They weigh you again for some dumbass reason. Like you're <laughs> going to weigh any different. <laughs> and then you go back. This process goes on and they ask for references and shit. And I just gave them wrong ass numbers. I gave them like college numbers and shit or references and shit. Like they're going to like if you were like a flea case, you would need these references. Right. Anyway. So you walk in to the last stage. Mm-hmm. Right. And. It's fucking hilarious because you're listening to dudes and you're like, yo, why are you here? Yo, why are you here? And then you listen to what what they did. These are like guy, icebreakers, but for prison. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> hey, so, so like, one guy, one guy, for? he's like, yeah, my my brother fucked my wife, so I I I I stabbed to kill him, but I only got a shoulder. So this guy's in there for manslaughter as a first de- first offense. Yeah. So. He was pretty much inches away from murder. Yeah. Right? And you're in there with this guy. And then there's like another dude that, you know, dosed some chick and the chick died. Yeah. But they don't know if it was him or somebody else. These are the stuff that you hear in there. For sure. And you realize like you're a good fucking person. As much as you sold drugs, as much or, as... Yeah, like, or, or like the reason that you actually got in here, like all this stuff. But you, you realize that for yourself, you're like, I might have fucking made some mistakes getting to this point, but... I'm not these guys. This is not like me. This is not my crew. This is not my people. No, no, no. no, no. You realize that real quick. But you can't let other people know. True. Because initially in that holding facility, it's fairly safe. Nobody's nobody's fucking around with you. But the next part, I'll tell you next time, where it gets to being real dangerous. Yeah, well, well, I I, I basically, for for this first episode, for this part, I want to basically get us to entrance like basically like driving to actual right, prison so, right. so take us through the end of the holding facility so basically. holding facility you get to stage 7 or yeah basically stage stage 7 exactly and uh, you get to a stage where they give you overalls okay. they give you blues they give everybody blues right I was just gonna and ask then, what color yeah, yeah. The, so they so give blues. you blues and they tell you to change and put your shit in a garbage bag yeah I had a, I think it was a camel light or a Marlboro red single <laughs> cigarette in my pocket. Yeah. And I kept that in, in the long johns underwear of the blues. Because <laughs> I didn't know, I didn't know where was this was. Was that a bad idea at the time? I had no that, idea. Oh, okay, okay. I okay. had no idea. And at the time, I was like, this is a good fucking idea. So they make you strip again right before you get on the bus. Yeah. It's the most embarrassing fucking thing. Fuck. You fucking, you're standing straight up. They tell you, and you're sectioned off, right? So there's like these urinal stalls okay. that are sectioning you off with other dudes. So every there's like four sheriffs, and they're like screaming like they're like you're in the fucking military yeah, or I was something. Yeah, say like fucking like like drill sergeants. Bend over, boys! Yeah, yeah. Bend over! Take off all your clothes! So you bend over, you take off all your clothes. Spread them cheeks, boys! So you grab onto your fucking ass cheeks as you're 90 degrees. Yeah. So you grab them off to your ass cheeks. You spread your cheeks. Right? And you cough. Oh, right. To see if anybody has anything in their ass. Yeah. And that was the beginning of me realizing where the fuck I am. <laughs> like part two, you realize where the fuck you were. Yeah. Because the first time was you're like, I don't belong with these guys. Yeah. And, but and then the second time was the, this, this moment. You, you are an animal at that point. Yeah. Right? You do what they say, or you go to SAG, or you get some type of punishment, or you get into a fight, you get yeah. stabbed, whatever. But it's not on your basis. It's things that are out of your control, and you have to either listen or get fucked up. And if you get fucked up, you got to be able to deal with the consequences there. Yeah. So let's put an end to this part one. But all I got to tell you is um, 
the reason I got into this was because I, I, I thought I was a hero. Right. You know, in a certain aspect. Okay. Which is absolutely ridiculous now that you look back on it. <laughs> sure. um, you realize how much of a waste of fucking time it is. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But I'll tell you one thing that stood out to me after this first part of recalling what happened. You realize that you were, you needed it in a certain right. way. Because if you didn't, you wouldn't realize in what kind of deficit you are in life to where you want to be. Sure. Right? Because then you know when to change your ways. Yeah. And the seven days weren't that bad. But I'll tell you one thing. It was really lonely. It was the loneliest time of your life, even though there's a bunch of people around you. Right. Because everybody's in their own little well of problems. And nobody can hear you out of that well yeah even though they're talking to you they're just talk spilling shit about their life they're not really listening to you what, what you're you saying say. yeah yeah so you're just there with all these stress and all these thoughts and whether you have that stress or you don't mm-hmm. it's two types of people in there there's a guy in there that's a professional right and there's a guy in there like me that's yeah. never been there before yeah and there were probably other guys in there as well that like you first timers first timers right? yeah and you do hard time like that. You yeah. do real hard time like that where you you think all the worst and all the bad stuff. Yeah. And you talk to an old timer that's been there or a, a dude who's experienced, maybe not an old timer, and maybe in his 20s or 30s, but he's been there like 10 times. Right. It's like, this is just the process. Because uh, I was just going to say that all of what you've, you've mentioned so far is just getting to the next part, which is yeah. actually. Actually. Exactly. And even that is not the feds and we'll go into why yeah, that's yeah, not yeah. the feds yeah. so the so the mortal combat boss that you're gonna fight at the <laughs> end of this fucking little holding facility is not even the scariest thing that you have to deal with yeah, yeah. when you get to the feds that's when that, that's, dudes that, that, that are that's doing that real shit life triple life fucking prison gangs the whole everything marshals guys yeah, are doing yeah. 11 life sentences yeah, yeah. you know that guy stabbed multiple co's he, you think he cares about you yeah you know yeah. that's the kind of stuff you got to deal with the guy's lost he's got no family he's an orphan mm-hmm. you know those guys are the scariest because they have nothing to lose they're already in the worst spot of life they're on, basically without being on death row they're the furthest thing too yeah and they're looking at permanently living their rest of their 40 50 years in prison yeah, yeah. you know so at, at, after the end of this uh these seven days where was your next destination and then we'll leave it there like, where, the next where, destination where what i remember is you're going through a facility that ne- near the door where you exit yeah. is all the people that are deranged mentally okay and you're seeing these thick basically bulletproof windows Jesus. and all of these guys some of them don't have light bulbs it's it's some shit out of a movie you can't even make this shit up yeah you're literally walking this hall and some of the fucking jails mm-hmm. some of the cells have lights and some of them have been broken and nobody gave a fuck enough to go in there and fix it you have dudes smashing their heads off the walls yeah, you have yeah. dudes screaming you have a dude fucking shivering fucking holding his legs this dude talking to themselves yeah. and you realize that these people not only are they fucked over in a fucking puzzle yeah. just being in jail, but they're in a puzzle in their own mind. Yeah. And, no hope. and you realize that gives you just a little bit of hope. Uh-huh. But you're stepping on the bus to fucking hell. So what what is what what name does hell have in this in this scenario? This is bus headed towards where? Fucking county prison, county man. prison, county prison, man. So we'll leave it at that. Next episode, next episode, next part is gonna be the journey to county prison. So thank you guys for taking part. This is part one of our prison series. We hope yes. you guys enjoyed. Take some notes, man. Some it might notes. help you out. It might help you out. Just be open to what you hear, man. It might be the thing you need in your life. And with that, we are out. out. Please. Share, subscribe, our YouTube, Instagram, Funny But Foul, everywhere except for Instagram, Funny But Foul Podcast. Give us a like, give us a sub, share us, show us some love, and we'll show you some love, man. Tell us what you want us to talk about, man. We're all open to all that shit. And 
just show love to everybody that does good to you show love to them